So I wasn't planning on it, but after several requests and some peer pressure, which I don't handle well, I mean, I've done some some weird shit back in the day. I decided to cave and make another one for you. So this is how I set up my Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Now the home screen setup you all saw in my review of the Note 9, which I'll link to down below, is a bit different than in this video because I wasn't quite satisfied with that look. Um, it was basically just for video eye candy. For this video, believe it or not, I decided to leave behind my beloved Nova Launcher like a skid mark in my ginch on a hot summer day and use Samsung's own theme engine to really change the look in and out. Now, as you probably noticed, my theme looks an awful lot like the Pixel UI. Well, gold star to you, my friend. Yay! because that's exactly what I went for. The Note 9 is a pretty complex and feature-rich device. It's easy to feel a little overwhelmed. Also, the UI makes me feel like I'm supposed to be sitting in a boardroom all day talking about fiscal earnings, which is, you know, something I'd like to avoid. So I downloaded the Pixelize theme along with the Material Design icon pack, which are both free. Uh, it themes the navigation bar, the quick settings, the settings menu and sub menus, system apps, and app icons. It's a complete theme, something I wouldn't be able to achieve without Samsung's own theme engine. And I wasn't really stoked with the wallpaper selection, so I used Wally, -E, which is also free, and downloaded this Boat at Sunset wallpaper, which I think looked nice. Then I wanted something nice for the always on display, but just like themes, there's an almost endless supply. A lot of them are shit, but an equal amount are pretty sick looking. Um, anyways, I couldn't decide, so I just bit the bullet and went with this red sun image, and I think it looks just swell. Okay, cool. So we've got the look. Now let's make this thing feel less like a Donald Trump and more like a Justin Trump. Trudeau. <laughs> That's a shitty analogy. They both suck, but at least one of them's legalizing weed. Yeah. Jumping into developer options, I swing down to animations and drop everything to 0.5. It's not that Samsung's animations are too slow. I just like it faster. Something my wife can attest to. Sorry, sweetie. I, I try. Now, no matter how many people disagree with me, because Bigsby sucks, I disable the Bigsby home screen and download BX Actions to map the dedicated button to Google Assistant, which just puts a huge smile on my face and gives me the tinglies. <laughs> now, this part is totally subjective. Everyone's got different needs, but from here, I usually start getting rid of or disabling as many bullshit apps as I can that I don't need or will ever use. So, you know, basically all the Microsoft and most Samsung apps. <laughs> then I jump over to the quick settings and toggle the brightness slider to live at the top instead of having to do a double swipe. This is actually an extremely underrated feature. Literally every phone should have this option. And while I'm in there, I like to tone down the insane mess that Samsung gives us out of the box. And so because we've got six quick toggle spots at the top, I obviously want to pick my most used toggles. Moving into device settings, literally the first thing I do is jump into sounds and vibrations and then turn off touch sounds, dial pad sounds, and keyboard sounds. Folks, whenever you get a new phone, please disable those sounds right away. Honest to God, I've actually told complete random strangers to turn that shit off before I do it for them. Anyways, after that, I slide back up and enable use volume keys for media and then quickly pop in a vibration intensity and crank that shit up. Good, 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 good vibrations. That's a Beach Boys throwback for those of you that haven't grown any pubes yet. I'll admit it was a pretty bad throwback, but then I quickly slide into sound quality and enable Dolby Atmos because you know, better sound. Okay, heading over to display now. I turn off auto brightness because no one tells me how bright my screen should be. Then I change screen mode to AMOLED cinema because to my eyes, it gives the punchiest colors. Punchiest is is that a real word? Then I move into edge screen and disable edge panels because stupid, but leave edge lighting enabled because cool. From there, I go into status bar and enable show recent notifications only to keep things looking clean and show battery percentage because numbers are fun. Then in navigation bar settings, I disable that little show and hide button dot because it's ugly and stupid. Okay, so now let's wrangle in all those goddamn advanced features. So S Pen, even though I never use it because I have two hands with fingers that work just fine. I actually leave everything default because if I did ever want to use it, I think all the pre-enabled features would actually be pretty nice to have quick access to. But with regards to all the other Harry Potter features, I disable pretty much everything except for one-handed mode, 
quick launch camera and video enhancer because I've had a very brain cell damaging youth so there's no fucking way I'd remember to use all of those features even if my life depended on it. Hopping very briefly into device maintenance, I like to enable auto restart to restart my phone every Monday morning. This way I got a nice fresh start every week. It's like starting over after a really weird weekend. And then I kick it into high performance mode which increases the max screen brightness as well as maxes out the resolution because higher screen brightness and resolution is, is just better. Moving into lock screen, a lot of people prefer the intelligent scan feature and I'll admit it's pretty cool, but when it doesn't work, which is often, it's now just taking me as long to successfully unlock it as it takes me to poop when I'm constipated. Obviously that's not entirely accurate, but you get my point. So what I'm trying to say in a very roundabout sort of way is that I use the fingerprint reader instead. In always on display, I go with just the clock for a cleaner look, seeing as I'm unlocking my phone with a fingerprint reader, and then I disable auto brightness and crank it up to max. It, it'll contribute to battery drain, but I don't really care. And then I can't remember if they came like this by default, but I have both show always and turn off to save battery enabled. Now from there, I hop into the camera settings because I usually don't like Samsung's default settings. So first I change the rear camera's video size to either standard or 60 FPS UHD because I can just retime or slow things down and post if I wanted. Then I disable scene optimizer because fuck that and then I enable HDR. For the front camera, I change the video size to QHD, enable HDR and disable show palm and face shape correction because I think that's stupid. Then because I don't really use any camera modes other than auto, pro, and live focus for the rear camera, I disable everything else. And same for the front camera, I just keep it to selfie and selfie focus. Then I enable flaw detection because that's a handy feature and leave pretty much everything else alone. And I think think that's everything? Jesus Christ, who knows? This phone has too much going on for me to remember everything. Probably because of the whole youth thing. But if I left something out or you have any questions, go ahead and sound off in the comments because I'll be in there for a bit hanging out. I'm also gonna do my best to provide links for the wallpaper and Samsung theme engine elements in case you currently have a Samsung phone. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, show me some love with that like button. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. But thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.